So welcome to Technodad Life and my name is Jeff and today what we're going to be doing is installing Yacht which is the easiest way to install Dockers on OpenMedia Vault. But there is some setup required. If you found this video helpful make sure you like and subscribe and check out the links in the description where you can support me either through an Amazon affiliate or PayPal if you want to buy me a cup of coffee. Okay, so first thing we need to do is make sure we have OMV Extras installed. And if you haven't done that already, follow the directions here on omvextras.org. Find out your installation and it's pretty quick and easy. Next, we want to go to OMV, your Open Media Wall, of course. And we want to scroll down to OMV Extras. And then we can either click Yacht here or Yacht over here. And so we're going to click it over there and we're going to click install so once that's done we're going to scroll back to the top and i want you to show you something so right here it says portainer slash portainer dash ce and so we need to remember that because that's going to come in handy but basically self-hosted yacht uh, is on top of the Portainer CE package. And that's important to know. So we go back and we close that. And we click on Yacht again. And open web. Now in the past, OpenMedia Vault had the email and password that you needed. But since it's not there now, we need to go to the Yacht website and find it. And so where we go is self-hosted.sh docs installation install. And so you just click install there. And here we have the login is admin at yacht.local and the password is pass. So we've put in admin at yacht.local and our password and we're going to log in. And now we're at our dashboard. This would be a great time to change the login ID and password to something that you will remember. And so then how we do that is we click on admin.local, click user. And then we have change password. And we're going to change the email address. And then we're going to change the passwords and then we're going to change user information. And so now we'll log in as admin at email.com and with our password we just put in. Next we're going to go over to templates and add template. And so for this we're just going to copy this top thing right here and then place it right down there where it says URL. And this is the self hosted template. Click Submit. And now when we click on Self-Hosted, uh, lots of different apps will come up to that we can then install, but not yet. There's a few other things we need to fix before we can actually do this. So next we're going to go to Settings, and then Template Variables. So here, every place where it says Yacht going down, we have to put the absolute path to our shared folder. So we're going to go over to Open Media Vault, go to Storage, Shared Folders, and underneath where it says Absolute Path here, it says Data, and we're just going to copy this to a clipboard. Go back to Yachts, and then paste that in, and do that for every place where it says Yachts. So next what we want to do is find our UID and our PIG, PGID uh, for our user. So those are the variables here. And so how we would do that is open up PuTTY, log into your server with your IP address. Either log in as root or if you already have a new user, log in as them. And then, so what we need to do here is just type in ID and then our user. 
And so for this first line, we can see our UID is 1000 and our PIG is 100. We can close that, change this to 1000 here, and then we can click Save. If you want to add in other variables, you see this plus sign, you can make your own variables, which then would fill in the templates. Okay, now that you've saved that, we're going to go over to templates, click on self-hosted. And so we're going to add in some different software here. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you three different software or apps that we're going to install and show you things to look out for when you do it, because not everything is filled out. So the first app we're going to do is AirSonic, which is the first one. And how you do it is you click Deploy. If you click View, that will take you to the container information. And you can also click Deploy from there. So here we're just going to click Deploy now in the regular window. And so on this first page, it fills out the name, the image name, and Restart unless stopped. So everything's OK there. We don't need to worry about any of the advanced things, but if you look down here, you can limit CPU memory, give special permissions, kernel options, container labels, uh, pass-through devices, and container commands. Next, we'll click Continue. So here, you have to pick out your network type. It doesn't fill it in for you. It does have the container ports already filled out, and click Continue. Volumes are already taken care of here because we did that in the settings. Click Continue. We have our PUID and our PGID already filled out because we did that in the settings, and then click Deploy. So what this will be doing now is downloading the container and then starting it up. And this will take a little while, so time for a cup of coffee. Once that's done, we can see our container is running. And if we click on AirSonic, it will take us to our variables. We can start it, stop it, restart it, kill it, remove it here. We can look at processes, logs. So we want to make sure it's actually started all the way and not quite yet. Then for stats, we can see it doesn't have any usage yet because it's just started. We just want to wait a minute till it's completely started before we try to log in. OK, so the server is up. So if we go back and we click on Web UI, that takes us to the Web UI. And if we log in, so now we can actually set up AirSonic. So there's one down. So that was the easy one. So next, we'll click on Code Server, and it's right there. Click Deploy. So here, everything's filled out. Click Continue. Networking, we want Bridge. Click Continue. Configuration folder is fine. Click Continue. Now, under environmental variables, we have a couple things that aren't filled out. So all these ones where it says value. So first is our time zone. And so how you find that out is you go to Wikipedia list of time zones, scroll down to find your time zone. So for me, it's America, New York. Password is whatever password you want for the program. And then sudo password is whatever it is on your computer. Then click deploy. And time for some more coffee. OK, now we can see code server is up. And if we click on web UI, we can log in. And so now we can do our work in our code server. Now let's try one more. So let's go back here. Click self-hosted, scroll down to Plex. So there's Plex, and we're going to click Deploy. Again, everything is filled out here. And so for network, we want to do bridge again. Make sure everything is filled out. It's going on down. Click Continue. We have containers, movies. And if we wanted to, we could add in music here. We won't do that for right now. Environmental variables are all filled out. And then click Deploy. And time for some more coffee.
Okay, so the error at the bottom says we had a bind binding problem at port 5353 and so we don't actually have anything on that port already so what we'll do is we'll just change it in our volumes here and then see if that fixes it. So we go back to general, click continue. Oh, actually it's in networking. So we're going to change this by 1 to 5354, see if that fixes our problem. Go down, continue, continue, and deploy. And that seemed to have fixed our Plex problem, but now here we don't have any ports. Okay, so now one thing that is happening with Yacht, which is it just sort of freezes or the containers don't come up anymore. So if we look here, then if this is blank, what you actually do is hit Control, Alt, and R, and that will refresh the page. And so let's try this again. So I got everything there. So networking, we need to change the bonjour to 5354. Scroll down, everything else is filled out. Hit continue. Everything is filled out there. Hit volumes, that looks great. Hit deploy. And so we have to remove the container that we tried that's not working. So we're gonna click on that. Click remove and delete. So now that puppy's gone. So let's try this again. Self-hosted, scroll down to Plex. Hit deploy. Okay, so again, everything's filled out here. Hit continue. Change our networking to bridge. We need to change our bonjour right here to 5354. Otherwise, there's a port conflict. Scroll down, hit continue, and then continue again, and then deploy. And here you can see it says restarting, but uh, nothing is happening. So currently on Yacht, Plex doesn't seem to be working as it is right now. Uh, so that is one thing. So it's easy, but sometimes it just doesn't work and you don't know why. So let's take a look at one other thing. So if you actually go to System and OMB Extras and you have Portainer and you have Portainer installed, remember in the beginning I said Yacht uses Portainer CE? Well, sometimes that can cause a conflict with Yacht and I'll show you where that is to see if we can actually get it to do the same thing again that it was doing before. So you can close that. We're gonna go back to Portainer. We're gonna open that up. We're going to create a user, log in, get started, click on local. And so now we're set up there. Now let's, now let's go back to Yachts. And so remember these were just working. Let's see what happens now. Oh, that still works. So at least what I found before, if you have Portainer installed first, then when you go to Yacht and you go to the web UI buttons, they don't work. So if that does happen to you, go to Portainer, go to environments, click on local, and then right here, type in the IP address of your server. So for us, 192.168.8.153 and then click update and then when you go to the UI here then it works again. So again, yeah, very easy to use. Not my first choice though. And so my first choice would be Portainer and using Stacks actually because it's much easier to figure things out then. So that's it for today. Hope you found this helpful. Make sure you like and subscribe and we'll see you next time. Bye bye.